There's something fascinating about the people who spend a quarter of a million dollars to fly to space for 11 minutes, with only four minutes technically beyond the Kármán line, the 100 kilometer boundary between Earth and space. Oh, the moon! You guys, I will have to tell you, look at the moon! The rocket that got them there landed itself, a feat that was once only dreamed of but now increasingly routine thanks to private space companies. And the people behind these advancements are billionaires, each gambling big on the future of the space industry. So why are billionaires racing to space and what's in it for them? Why is it so expensive and will the day come when more people can finally go? Can we stop walking in slow-mo now? 20 more yards. The reasons why the most prominent space companies think SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Virgin Galactic exist are slightly different, but they all center around the same idea, expanding humanity's presence beyond Earth. What does that mean? Virgin Galactic is all about experience, SpaceX is about multi-planetary living, and Blue Origin is about creating new worlds beyond Earth. These companies aren't just selling rides, they're selling visions. Since Dennis Tito paid $20 million to become the first space tourist in 2001, space has gone from a government monopoly to a billionaire playground. But these joy rides aren't just about ego or revenue, they're about building infrastructure, controlling orbits, and racing to shape a future market that's expected to hit $1 trillion by 2040. But while the vision does sound futuristic, the biggest barrier isn't science fiction, it's physics and cost, because the higher and faster you want to go, the more fuel you need. Flavor heading? Tasty. We need to get up to delicious. That makes sense. Engineer Philip Swan found that the cost of sending stuff into space doesn't just rise in a straight line, it actually skyrockets. That's because even small increases in speed, called delta V, require a lot more fuel, especially when aiming for far off destinations like the moon or Mars. Sending even one kilogram to low Earth orbit could cost around $7,300, with SpaceX now estimating it's around $1,000. But either way, if we ever hope to get to Mars, it's going to cost billions. That's why reusable rockets are now a game changer. Think of every plane had to be rebuilt after every flight. No one would fly, so that's why SpaceX's Falcon 9, which can land itself and fly again, has been a game changer, reducing launch costs by up to 65%. But reusability mainly benefits near-Earth missions, while deep space still requires expendable stages. Governments can afford these long-term timelines and scientific goals, but with private companies, they need business models. So each company is betting on a different version of the future, and their strategies tell us what they think space is really for. Founded in 2002 with $100 million from Elon Musk, SpaceX had one clear goal, make rockets cheaper and go to Mars. NASA at the time was spending over $2 billion per launch. Musk wanted to bring that cost down using reusable rockets and turn space into something scalable. But $100 million wouldn't cut it. So Musk did what few others thought to do. He lobbied, sued, and aggressively pursued public contracts that had long gone to aerospace giants like Lockheed Martin and Boeing. Early on, SpaceX benefited from government funding and guidance years before launching anything into orbit, and the result was that over time, Musk's company secured at least $38 billion in public funds through contracts, loans, tax credits, and subsidies, often at critical moments for the company. That includes deals with NASA, the Pentagon, and intelligence agencies like the National Reconnaissance Office, where one spy satellite contract alone was reportedly worth $1.5 8 billion dollars. As of 2024, SpaceX held 52 active government contracts with seven different agencies, potentially adding another 11.8 billion dollars. NASA alone has invested more than 15 billion dollars in SpaceX's programs. And though Musk started SpaceX with private funds, his ability to win government backing became a defining advantage, prompting even rival Jeff Bezos to say, Elon's real superpower is getting government money. And as Falcon rockets prove themselves, 
NASA shifted roles from being an operator to being a customer. Estimates now suggest a Falcon 9 launch costs just 28 to 50 million dollars, a fraction of traditional missions. And with Starlink bringing in over 8 billion dollars a year from global internet service, SpaceX is now the only company with a profitable space product. Now let's look at the others. Founded in 2000, which is two years before SpaceX was founded, Blue Origin took a much quieter route. Jeff Bezos now funds it by selling $1 billion of Amazon stock each year, and his goal isn't Mars, it's actually orbiting space colonies. Inspired by physicist Gerard O'Neill, Bezos envisions a trillion people living in rotating space habitats. New Shepard, Blue Origin's suborbital rocket, offers tourists a short trip past the Kármán line, four minutes of weightlessness and a spectacular view. Blue Origin has even reached orbit with their next-gen rocket, Nuglin, which is now preparing for its second flight as of this recording. But one of their biggest milestones has to be building the BE-4 engine, which now powers ULA's Vulcan rocket. The company has also begun working on lunar technology like Blue Alchemist, which is this project that is supposed to make solar panels from moon dust. But the company has been slow to scale. Virgin Galactic, on the other hand, took an entirely different approach. Richard Branson licensed the technology and design from the creator of Spaceship One, which was the first privately funded ship to reach space and set out to commercialize it with Spaceship Two. And his goal was adventure, experience, and a new kind of luxury tourism, but it hasn't been easy. In 2014, a test flight crash killed a pilot and revealed critical design flaws. Timelines were then pushed back, but Branson's team persisted. Today, Spaceship Two launches from a carrier plane, ascends to space, and returns gently to Earth. Tickets can cost anywhere from $200,000 to $250,000, which is a fraction of what Dennis Tito paid in 2001. And speaking of Tito and the $20 million flight, it was historic. He was the first American businessman and civilian to visit the International Space Station, and he did it through Russia's space agency, not NASA, on Soyuz TM-32. And only seven civilians followed over the next decade, until the 2020s when we saw 18 space tourists fly to space in 2021, 20 in 2022, and 13 in 2023. And while NASA avoided space tourism, Russia embraced it out of necessity not vision. But now that's changing. With private companies like Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin offering shorter, cheaper experiences, space tourism is scaling slowly. And the idea of space as a luxury, not just a scientific frontier, is reshaping how we think about who space is for. Still, this isn't just about thrill rides, it's about control. And while the US government has avoided strict regulation to avoid choking innovation, that leaves space mostly governed by handshakes and outdated treaties. The Outer Space Treaty of 1967 and the Artemis Accords of 2020 set broad principles, but they aren't enforceable. The Washington Compact, which is a newer proposal, ensures peaceful, transparent, and responsible behavior in space, hasn't been signed by major players like SpaceX or Blue Origin. So yes, the billionaires are racing, not just to fly, but to shape the rules. And some ask, why spend billions on rockets when we have so many problems down here? Jeff Bezos has said, We have to do both. You know, we have, there, we have lots of problems in the here and now on Earth, and we need to work on those. And we always need to look to the future. We've always done that as a, as a species, as a civilization. We have to do both. Supporters say space investments create jobs, drive innovation, and protect our species from extinction. Critics say it's about market power and new industry, because this time it's not astronauts planting flags, it's CEOs signing contracts. And the future they're building will start off world, but it may reshape everything back on Earth too. But dive even deeper into this topic and more at 1440.